end of today's game. So, uh, John Oakey, it's very important to get out to a good start. And John Oakey is going to get us off to a good start. He's outside the stadium. John? Well, John, the band just went by, so that's a good sign that we're getting ready to kick off here at Lincoln's Memorial Stadium. And for the second straight week, you don't need to change the channel because as soon as we get done with here, the festivities begin. Here's what you need to know. Nebraska kicks things off right here on KTV, Channel 7 at 235 against Cal. We follow that up with our live postgame show on Newswatch 7 at 6. Then so we've got more football in primetime. UCLA takes on Ohio State at 7 o'clock. Then we're back at 10-12 during KTV, Newswatch 7, night be at 10. We will have all the highlights, more reaction, game stats, and more, including the rest of the day in sports. So shoots another busy day right here on Channel 7, but well worth it, and that's why we get paid the big bucks. Well, you may, but I, you know, I don't know what the deal is uh, with my situation. Anyway, uh, you may notice uh, something new here at Tom Osborne Field. The old artificial turf was taken out, and this is field turf. I don't know if you can see some of the uh, ground-up tire coming out there, but that's field turf. Everybody seems to like it, and Sean McMahon, you have the story of field turf today. <laughs> that's right, John. You know, it looks like grass, it feels like grass, but it never needs mowing. Kind of sounds like a dream come true to your average homeowner, but to the Huskers, it's a welcome change from the old carpet. This is Field Turf, the new surface at Memorial Stadium and the first of its kind in college football. I don't think there's any doubt that uh, we're going to have a little advantage uh, towards other teams as far as the turf. The transformation began this past July. The old artificial turf was ripped out. In its place, the new state-of-the-art field turf. Blades made out of a combination of polyethylene and polypropylene, all surrounded by a thick base of ground-up rubber and silica sand. The combination creating a surface that really does feel like grass. It's really soft. You get uh, It's easier on your ankles and your knees, I think. And, and uh, most of all, it just doesn't burn you up like the other turf. You know, you can slide across it. It's not going to tear your skin up like the other stuff did. It's just more comfortable to play on a, a, a surface where uh, you're not really thinking about getting turf burns or twisting your knee and things like that. It's not that hard. It's, it's real soft and, you know, it plays like grass. It's also a bit slower, like natural grass, but the Huskers are quick to point out their opponents will be a tad slower, too. And speaking of the opposition, they might find adjusting to the new stuff isn't easy. The first few days we practiced on it, we didn't exactly know what shoes to wear, and some guys prefer different shoes over others, so it might be hard for the other teams to get their feet and their minds accustomed to playing on this surface. Uh, there's a lot of difference, and, and uh, we've kind of got it all figured out now, so hopefully that might be a little bit of an advantage for us game time. And we have a sample of the turf so you can take a closer look. This black stuff you see right here is the ground up rubber and silica sand. It holds the blades much like soil holds grass. Looks pretty sharp and should last 15 to 25 years. John, that's just a few of the reasons that Tom Osborne has endorsed field turf. So if the good doctor likes it, we know it must be a good product. And since you're expecting rain, you'll be glad to know. Chad Stanley, one of the grad assistants, told me the stuff holds up great on uh, when it's wet. In fact, they wet the field down this week. Well, the field turf isn't the only new thing here at Memorial Stadium. When we return, we're going to take you upstairs. We'll show you the sweetest part of the stadium improvements when Big Red Zone Game Day returns. We are just 27 minutes away from kickoff between California and Nebraska, the third meeting between these two schools, the Huskers 2-0 in the series. Welcome back to Big Red Zone Game Day. The last time these teams met, last year out in Berkeley and Eric Crouch started his second game at quarterback for the Huskers and he led Nebraska to a touchdown on their first drive to make it seven nothing. The black shirts were dominating all day for the Huskers allowing just 12 yards rushing nine first downs just three points on the day and it was a 14 13 game until the final four minutes of the game when Nebraska scored on a touchdown and a late field goal the final score Nebraska 24 California three last year's Cal game I think was was more of a, a challenge than last week's Iowa game they made some big plays last year and, and our offense really struggled for a lot of the game 
uh, when they bring so many guys up in the box, it's it's uh, kind of hard to get the running game going. So hopefully we can we can really open it up a little bit and and keep them honest. John Oakey, we haven't forgotten about you out there. Pe people coming to Memorial Stadium are going to notice some other big changes around here. Yeah, shoot, you can't help but notice a different atmosphere when you arrive here because there it is, standing 175 feet tall, the newest addition to this grand old stadium. And uh, we wanted to have the very best in the country. I don't know many that are better than this. You be the judge. Memorial Stadium doubled in size from 69 feet to 175 feet. From the outside, it's enormous. Inside, beautiful. And this is Coach Solich's booth. This is for his family and friends. Frank Solich will still be on the sidelines, yeah. but he might want to join them. There are two levels of suites, kind of 42 skyboxes in all. Box. 10 cost two million for 25 years. 29, 75,000 a year for 10 years. Three go to the chancellor's well, office, no, athletic that's director, that's and other Nebraska officials. The suites can seat up to 28 people, and they come with all the amenities. This one is athletic director Bill Burns. It's like a small apartment with a great view. There's also a club right level, here, seating 1,500 people. But even if you can't afford the suites or the club level, you, Joe Fan, still benefit. If you've been down on the new main concourse level, you notice that that's about twice the size of the old one. Uh, if you look at the new concession areas, you look at the number of new restrooms. If you've been over on the east side, which was open last year, you've seen that we've done the same things over there. So our fans who are not being upstairs have still benefited tremendously from, from this. But if anyone can gauge what the new improvements mean, it's Don Bryant. Fox, as he's known, served as sports information director for 31 years. You know, it looked big back in the mid-1930s when I first saw it. I thought it was pretty big then. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's just amazing the transformation that's taken place. Today, Fox will be honored for all his years of service when the press box will be named in his honor. I think in a larger sense it's a, a, a tribute to the program because things like this don't happen just because of one person. Shoots, we could spend a full hour talking to Brian. He's got some incredible stories, some incredible experiences, so a well-deserving honor for him this afternoon. Absolutely it is, and his good friend Keith Jackson coming back to do his first game out of retirement here at Nebraska just to celebrate with the Fox. John, we'll check in with you later. Right. The renovation of the West Stadium may be done, but the Huskers quarterback plan, it's still under construction. And uh, the question is, how much will Bobby Newcomb and Eric Crouch play today? We'll uh, put that co question to Coach Solich when Big Red Zone game day returns. Welcome back to Big Red Zone game day. The Sea of Red has rolled into Memorial Stadium as the Huskers get ready to take on the Cal Bears. You know, earlier this week, third string eye back Carell Buckhalter walked out of practice, didn't show up for three days. He was welcomed back on Thursday. He won't suit up today. Darren Dietrich will be in his place. But last week, it was the quarterback situation. No problems there, though, this week, Sean. No, the big question is how much will each one play? We do know that both will play in both halves, but exactly how many snaps each one takes, even Frank Solich isn't saying. Now, I won't get tied down to saying uh, Bobby will get uh, this many series uh, and Eric will get this many series. Um, Bobby will get the, the majority of uh, the time at quarterback. He is our starter. That's been something we've indicated from day one. Uh, I've also indicated that the number two guy would get playing time. The Huskers followed that plan to a tee this past weekend with each quarterback accounting for three touchdowns. Touchdown! How it worked last time uh, against Iowa was uh, was really not all bad in, in that, uh, you know, we really had uh, not only a talented guy on the field the whole game at the spot, but we had a fresh guy on the field uh, at the spot. It's nice to go in the game and see what the defense is throwing at you and then maybe come out for a series or two and then um, take a look at it from a different angle, you know, uh, let somebody else get in there and just refresh your legs a little bit and refresh your mind. The team has confidence in, in both of those quarterbacks. Uh, we think with any one of those guys in that they can lead us to a victory. And I think, you know, when we have when you have two great athletes, two great quarterbacks like those two, they have to be on the field. They're both probably two of the most explosive players, not only in the conference, but in the nation. Um, they're so fast and so athletic that uh, they just make plays. And, and any way we can get them on the field, I know the coaches are going to try to do that. And uh, no matter who's out there playing quarterback, the offense is going to move the ball, and we're going to be effective doing that. 
The team has confidence in the quarterbacks, and the quarterbacks have confidence in each other. Very happy and very proud to have Eric on my team. You know, he's one guy that uh, you wouldn't want to play against. You know, you want him on your side and your sideline. Both of us uh, showed that you know we can put some points on the board, and we can have uh, very good drives to, to lead our team to score. And I think that that's what we need to focus on this year is just encouraging whoever's out there, and uh, you know when you're out there to hey you know give it your best shot. I'm confident uh, that both guys will, will will step on the field and have a chance to play some great football in, in every game. But the system of being able to have a fresh guy on the field, I think, can only contribute uh, to what, um, uh, what we'll be able to get done throughout the, the course of the year. And that's how I would like to continue to use him, no matter who stars, no matter who comes in, uh, in, in second. Both quarterbacks are so talented, the coaching staff is trying to figure out new ways to get them both on the field. And we saw it last week, John. Eric Crouch playing the receiver spot. Don't be surprised if we see even more of that today. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we happen to know he was practicing a little more at wing back this week. You'll definitely see one guy who's familiar with that receiver position this afternoon. And coming up on Big Red Zone game day, you'll meet that Missouri miracle man, Matt Davison, though. He's trying to lose that image. His story when we return live to Memorial Stadium. Welcome back to Big Red Zone Game Day. That's the University of Nebraska marching band getting the folks fired up. We're 15 minutes away from the kickoff. John Oakey, receiver, not a glory position at Nebraska, is it? No, it is, John, but the kids keep coming to Nebraska anyway. You know, every once in a while you get a kid who does something special. That player is Matt Davison, and if you don't recognize the name, you'll certainly remember this. Third down. Cross to the middle, juggle, diving, touchdown, Nebraska! Davison on the deflection! I can't say that I, I don't like people to talk about the, the catch because it's, it was a great point in my career, you know. I, I think that's why you play the game of football is to have things like that happen to you. And, and uh, you know, I was only 18 years old and, and it was something that, that I'll never forget. But it was a motivation for me to try to do other things here to try to get people to forget about that. Matt Davison is no one catch wonder. He has 47 in his career for 695 yards. And when it comes time for the Huskers to throw in their run-oriented offense, Davison wants the ball. You know, I'm the type of guy that when it's third and eight or third and 12, I want to be on the field. I want to be a guy that's known as, as a reliable receiver that, that uh, will make the play when, when uncalled upon. The junior is reliable. In fact, he has a streak of 18 games in which he's caught at least one pass. You know, you never know in this offense. You might have five or six or eight opportunities in a game, and you might not have any. It depends on how we're running the ball and, and how the offense uh, needs to be balanced out in certain games. The kid from Tecumseh knows his role in this offense. Blocking will always come first, but he still works hard every season to get bigger and faster. And now he's being mentioned in the same breath as Irving Fryer, Nebraska's former receiver, who was the first player chosen in the 1984 NFL Draft. Um, it's a good motivator for me, though. I mean, I, I want to be the best I can be, and, and if people want to throw me in that category, then I appreciate it, but I really don't think I deserve it at this point. One thing Davison does know, he wants to find the end zone more. He has one career touchdown, but it was a doozy. And I never even got to celebrate that one like a normal touchdown because everybody was tackling me. So I'd like to score one where I can celebrate like a, a normal receiver, I guess. Davison is moving up in Nebraska's career charts. He needs 14 more to move into the top 10, 36 more to take over second, but shoots. He'll need 97 catches to take over the top spot on Nebraska's charts. That guy who's at the top, Johnny Rogers. All he did was win a Heisman. Yeah, he was a pretty good player. Yeah, yeah, I, know, I know he's got two years to do it, John, but considering the Huskers only completed 174 passes all of last year, that could be a tall order for Matt Davison to beat Johnny Rogers. Well, if you like scoring, this may not be the game for you. When Big Red Zone Game Day returns, we break down the matchup between the Huskers and the Golden Bears. Stay with us. Big Red Zone Game Day is brought to you by the people inspired to build vehicles for your mind and heart. Nissan, driven, and by No Frills Pharmacy. For the lowest prescription prices and free delivery, call No Frills Pharmacy. Once again, KETV Sports Director John Schutz. 
Welcome back to Memorial Stadium, Tom Osborne Field, as Big Red Zone game day rolls on. Well, Nebraska comes into this game with a 1-0 record, as do the California Bears. Huskers had an easy time of it beating Iowa last week. The Golden Bears, they struggled a little bit against Rutgers, winning 21-7. You know, at a school known for its sterile research laboratories, the Bears are testing the thesis that defenses win championships. And nine. Seth the Cal Bears come to Lincoln with five solid NFL prospects on defense. But they struggled in the first half against Rutgers' multiple offense, which featured a lot of motion, quick calls at the line of scrimmage, and a few gadget plays. Our defense was a little bit wormy on, on the first half, and the great thing was they came back in the second half and really shut Rutgers down, and, and that was important that they finished strong. So, you know, I think the defense is uh, learning to play again this year. Um, Personality-wise, a few new adjustments. A couple guys have been injured through the course of fall camp, and, and playing together for the first time, they really just have to fine-tune. I think they were one of the better defenses we faced last year. You don't see many breakdowns. You know, it, um, it will certainly take a, an excellent offensive day on our part to uh, to get done what we need to get done to uh, to have it work. Last season against Nebraska, the Bears stacked nine men near the line of scrimmage with some success, and the Huskers expect to see that same attacking defense today. Well, it's a challenge, but you also know that kind of you, if you break that first, that first wave, there's uh, potential for a lot of big plays. First attack will be to run the ball, try and pound it at them, and of course counter it with some uh, play action, some op option offense as well. And uh, of course we can pass the ball a little bit too. And you know we'll throw a lot of uh, drop back passes against them, and we'll open it up a little bit. On the other side of the ball, Cal has a new offensive coordinator and uncertainty at several positions. Tailback Marcus Fields ran for 123 yards on just 11 carries last week, but sophomore Samuel Clemens shares the quarterbacking duties with true hotshot freshman Kyle Buller. The young freshman who's a true freshman has really got a, got a live arm. It's a real hard thing for a kid that young to come out and have it all down. Translation, it could be a long day for Cal against a Husker defense that didn't allow Iowa a first down until the final three minutes of the first half last week. No matter how well you play, there's always things you can improve on. And I think that's the, what separates, you know, Nebraska from a lot of teams is that, you know, we don't settle for anything less than perfection. And do not overlook the importance of special teams. The Cal Bears, John Oakey, have one of the best return men in the nation in Delpho O'Neill. Yes, they do. And John, remember, Channel 7 is your home for the best coverage of the Huskers. You don't believe me? Check out today's lineup. It all begins as soon as we stop babbling here. Kickoff between Nebraska and California right here on KETV Channel 7. Immediately after the game, keep it right here for the post-game show during Newswatch 7 at 6. We've got more football tonight. UCLA and Ohio State tangle at 7 o'clock. Then we're back with a big red zone game day at 10-12. That's during the KETV Newswatch 7 night be at 10. We'll have the highlights, reactions, stats, and more, plus the rest of the day's sports and shoots. Another busy day here, but well worth it. Man, are you one of those fast talkers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, John, we'll check in uh, later with the postgame, of course, as you mentioned. Coming up, kickoff between the Huskers and the Cal Bears. Thanks for watching Big Red Zone Game Day. Keith Jackson and Bob Greasy are coming up next. Stay with us.